Hello and welcome to day four of the ultimate Edinburgh Fringe. So today we're going to be going and exploring um, Zone D. Now last night we missed a couple of uh, shows that I had planned, but that's fine. It actually worked out quite well. Uh, got a bit of sleep and now today we're going to explore Zone D, but looking through the app I managed to find a nice tour to do and the best part is free so let's find out what that's all about now, edinburgh is famous for having lots and lots of tours. Most of them are like ghost tours, and there are a lot of really great ghost tours. You've got uh, City of the Dead, you've got Old Reeky, there's so many, and I've done loads of them. This is actually my fifth time in Edinburgh. So I'm gonna try something slightly different today. And I found a tour to do with Harry Potter. And uh, the Harry Potter tour is absolutely free, but the problem is, and something that you need to be aware of, that any time they say it's free, it's usually free to enter, but not free to leave. So make sure you have some cash handy because you'll have to hand that out probably after the event. So I'm gonna go and get some breakfast and then I'm gonna start the Harry Potter trial. Let's go. The dark and overgrown graveyard, the black outline of a small church was visible. Now does anyone know or perhaps can take a guess as to which Harry Potter book that was an extract from? Yes. Yes, indeed! Give us a round of applause. Fantastic. Found the note. That was indeed from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. If you've not read that book or seen that film, please plug your ears as there's a little bit of a spoiler coming. I'll give you a sign to unplug in about two seconds, but for now. set up outside the castle. That stadium is set up for the Edinburgh Military Tattoo, which is a military show that takes place every day this month. Now this stadium does look very, very much like a quidditch pitch outside Hogwarts, where it has those massive flags that grew in the breeze, and it actually would have been what J.K. Rowling would have seen from her seat in the Elephant House. They did also forget the Iggory and the last name Diggory, although Amos D sounds like kind of a cool rapper name. He's got a great career now, so good job, Amos. Named Thomas Riddle and hopefully you remember that Tom Riddle is Lord Voldemort's real name. However, looking closely at the spelling of the last name Riddle, you'll see it was changed in the novels. For here it's spelled R-I-D-D-E-L-L, -L, and in the books it ends with L-E. Oh, beautiful railway bridge on the silvery Tay, alas, I'm very sorry to say that 90 lives have been taken away on the last Sabbath day. And as soon as he did that, the floor of the mausoleum broke through. Now, this is a very, very old graveyard. It started in the 16th century. And as of today, there are over 500,000 people buried in this graveyard. So over there is uh, what they call the Mackenzie Poltergeist. It's supposed to be one of the most haunted parts of the graveyard anywhere in the world. <gasps> So the Grey Friars Bobby is a statue of a little dog. That's where the Potter Trail tour starts. So far the tour's been really fun. I've been learning a lot about Harry Potter, about the gravestones and stuff, and then we're moving to another part of it. Um, I remember doing a ghost tour before, and like a drunk guy came up to the, to the ghost tour guy. I said, oh, excuse me, do you know where something something is? And the ghost tour guy just kind of broke character and said, I went to live with you. And the guy was like, Dude, I mean, hey, dude, <laughs> that was so funny. Let's go. So there it says the birthplace of uh, Harry Potter. Uh, unfortunately, it was opened <laughs> after the first book was created, that's why there's uh, quotation marks on birthplace, which is quite interesting. So the Potter Trail starts outside Great Fri Grey Friars Kirkyard, which is the churchyard, 
um, and that's in zone C. Uh, the next thing we'll be seeing is in zone B, and that's when we start the zone D kind of tour of lots of different kind of shows. But uh, it's good to kind of squeeze all these things in. So I think this is going to end up now uh, on the Royal Mile somewhere, and they're going to show us the real Diagon Alley. Let's check it out. So the tour ends here, and uh, apparently you've got the Boy Wizard shop. There's a, a witchy, witches and caddies kind of shop for witching stuff and tours. And there's even a joke shop down the end, so that's pretty nice. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing. So it's the last Sunday of the Fringe, and uh, the road is now opened up to go to Edinburgh Castle. I don't have time to actually see the castle itself, I've seen it before, but uh, at least I can walk up the street and have a look at what's there. There are some interesting attractions around the castle. You've got Camera Obscura, which is kind of a weird and wacky kind of attraction where they've got optical illusions and kind of weird mirrors and stuff, which is quite fun. You've also got over here, the Scotch Whiskey Experience, which is kind of a tour through the history of whiskey and how it's created. And they even give you little samples as well. Uh, and I really like the Smoky Whiskey, which is quite cool. It's created in uh, an island off uh, Scotland called Islay. What they do, they kind of like get the peat from that area, they smoke it and then it just gives the uh, whiskey that extra kind of smoky flavor, which is quite cool. So I'm gonna go over there and have a look. Looks like we have uh, William Wallace over there. Freedom! So that's the entrance to Edinburgh Castle and this courtyard here is where they do the royal tattoo. And it's uh, usually, that's why they block off all the roads and everything. And it's like a military exercises and troops and parades and stuff. Uh, I think we saw like jet planes fly over, which is pretty impressive. And they do fireworks and stuff, which is pretty cool. The show is not on a Sunday. So that's why it's a lot easier to actually get access to this at the minute. Uh, but I think they probably give you access during the day anyway. So that's pretty cool. Also, there's a tartan shop over here. Now tartan is the kind of um, the cloth that people wear usually with the kilts and stuff and they all have patterns and the reason that different there are different patterns is i think it's something to do with like the houses of different clans and things in scotland and each one would have their own pattern to kind of like distinguish themselves from each other which is pretty cool let's go and have a quick look at some tartans Lots to see, lots to see, but some people just can't see. Okay, back on the Royal Mile. We're gonna go and find our next attraction, which is uh, Death and Chances, which is a historical interactive journey through history. So let's check that out. So just completed the uh, Death and Chance historical tour. It's actually really nice. It starts in this really old house. You can see that there. And uh, you start the top floor and on every floor you've got a different character that's talking to you about different periods in Scotland's history. So you get to hear about uh, you know, the troubles with England and then uh, how they were trying to do trade and the plague. And then um, when Scotland became a union with, with the United Kingdom. Really nice, a lot of stuff I didn't know about, and really, really good, and the actors were really amazing, so well done, it was amazing. Um, now here, we've got on the uh, on the Royal Mile, some performances, lots of free performances happening on the Royal Mile. It's the very last day, really, of the Fringe, the main day. Like, there is still one more day tomorrow, but I think a lot of shows actually stop today. Uh, and it's called the Royal Mile, because if you follow the road all the way up, you go up to the castle. 
So now we're gonna go to our next show and finally we're gonna get to zone D. Um, so let's start making our way down there and we will see our next show. Let's find out what that is. Give me I'm giving it my own Yeah, I'm not the guy She's taking on I keep dancing You're mine So I finally made it to Zone D I'm in the Pleasant Courtyard Now they've got lots of shows here So the rest of the day I'm going to be doing lots of shows in this area And somewhere nearby as well so I need to find where Pleasance One is, and maybe also a bathroom. Let's go. <laughs> found it, let's go. Okay, so I found it. There's a massive queue of people going in. So the next show that we're gonna go and see is Murder She Didn't Write. It was an improvised murder mystery show. So that should be fun. Let's go and check it out. Getting ready for the show. So just completed the uh, Murder She Didn't Write. It was a very good improvised show where uh, they did lots and lots of uh, great acting making just stuff up on the thing and it went really well together okay so now we're gonna go and see the tina turner story and uh it's a really really hot day today so i have no doubt there's gonna be lots of steamy windows and of course compared to lots of other shows it's gonna be simply the best let's go check it out okay so just about to go in to see the tina turner story it's actually, Tina Turner is played by um, a pop star from a few years ago, from Cleopatra Kermenatcha. So it's gonna be quite interesting. And she does a few shows here. She does the Aretha Franklin story as well. So uh, let's go and check out the Tina Turner story. It's time for the Tina Turner story. No problems, I'm gonna be in the no So I just saw the Tina Turner story. Uh, Cleopatra Higgins was absolutely amazing. The show was great, the band was amazing. Everything was really good. In fact, I wanna say, I love that show. But then again, what's love got to do? Got to do with it. So now I'm going from a planned musical to a improvised musical. So I'm going back to the Pleasants and I'm gonna see Showstoppers where not even they know what they're about to sing. It all depends on what suggestions the audience gives them. Let's go and check it out. A long, long time ago, there was a tale of a boy who filled his family's hearts and hopes and lifted them with joy. And he took the absolutely amazing it it really was a showstopper the um, 
the, the amount of musical knowledge of musicals and the way you put music and songs together is incredible because they literally just made a lot of that stuff up on the spot which has blown my mind <laughs> it really was that good so definitely check that out if you ever get a chance so the next show is pete Furman, who is a magician and uh, does a lot of great comedy and stuff so i'm going to be watching that so let's go and check it out it's time for some magic. So, saw the Pete Furman show. Absolutely amazing. Really great magician. Really funny as well. Uh, and he's going to be going on tour next year. So, if he comes to a town near you, go and check it out. Next up, we are going to go and check out uh, Reginald D. Hunter with his soulful Georgia Southern voice. Uh, and I really love his style of comedy. So let's go and check that out. You know what, there's a lot of um, shows that I just didn't get a chance to see. I just passed by Colin Cloud. Now he was on the list, but I just couldn't quite fit it in. Uh, so you got Colin Cloud, there was like, um, I think Chris Dugdale. These guys, there's like so many shows that you want to kind of fit in and you just couldn't, couldn't do it. So, it's, I mean, it's literally, you've got like thousands of shows. It's just impossible to fit them all in. And even if you do have time, it's like other shows kind of clash with each other as well. So you try your best and you try and see it. It's funny because when I first heard about the Fringe Festival, I actually thought it was something to do with hair which is very strange. Um, I wasn't sure why it was in, in uh, Edinburgh as well, because uh, it should have probably been held in Barnet. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna see Reginald D. Hunter and check out his comedy magic. So, just saw Reginald D. Hunter. Absolutely amazing, uh, as always. It's probably the third time I've seen him live. It's really, really fun. It's laid back and just goes through everything. It's really good. So, now it's time for the final show of the night. Uh, it's time for a little bit of uh, bad wrestling with some funny commentary. And uh, the commentary is gonna be done by Colt Cabana. Now he is like a cult legend in the indie wrestling world. And if you ever wanna see a really great match with him, I really recommend checking out Colt Cabana versus Orange Cassidy, who is freshly squeezed. Check that out, you might laugh your ass off. It's uh, brilliant. So let's go and check out some wrestling commentary. So I'm here, ready to watch some wrestling. And apparently it's sponsored by WrestleTalk. This is WrestleTalk and I'm Ollie Davis. No, not really. We have got Colt Cabana at the back and he's gonna start doing some wrestling commentary. So let's check it out. It's time for some bad wrestling commentary. Let's go. Wrestle Ramble podcast, which has been described by many as consistent. And now please welcome to the stage your hosts, John Hastings and Colt Cabana. <laughs> That's it. It's the end of another episode. So we completed Zone D today, and uh, it's the final full night of the Fringe for us. So that's it. So tomorrow I do have two shows left over before I head off to the airport. So join me tomorrow, and let's find out what the final two shows will be. Until then, good night. Yeah.